That little bit of music was created on Excel on a spreadsheet. This is the Excel sample machine. Uh, it uses samples. These samples I created in Audacity, uh, kind of 808-ish. Um, and I don't know how many samples you can. I never pushed it to the limit. But right now I've done as many as seven, eight samples. And uh, you can fire them off in a drum machine type fashion, different you can adjust your timing. You can adjust your length, the many hundreds and hundreds of uh, notes. And uh, you can uh, adjust how many instruments. Uh, let's start, shall we? Open Excel. Um, open a brand new worksheet, blank worksheet. We're going to put in some code. But if you don't want to uh, type in some code, you can always just go to the link below. And the, you can copy and paste the text. Right-click on any of the menus, select Customize the Ribbon. Make sure Developers tag, tab is clicked. Then click on the, the Developers tab and go to the Visual Basic Editor. Go to Insert and add a module. And now we'll start typing our code. Code begins with declaring a, uh, a Windows API call that lets us get the milliseconds from the clock from of... Uh, your PC, so we can you have very accurate timing. We declare the sound buffers, add a few constants that we're going to use, and then declare a couple of variables that we use to keep the timing, and uh, and the number of um, sounds. Now we dimension the array of uh, sound buffers, and we start loading them with the sounds from the wave file names on the spreadsheet. And uh, that class ID, classification ID there, um, that's for an embedded Windows Media Player, which is the root of all this. So we load in the sounds, and then we let the sounds play muted, so they load into the buffers. We even put a start delay on the loop, on the playback, in order to make sure that we have loaded all the sounds correctly. This routine is the destroy of the sound buffers, giving back the memory to the system. This is the ticker function. The ticker function gets the milliseconds from the computer and tells the play loop that it's time to play the next sound. And this is the play loop. The play loop um, loads, calls the sound open to load all the sounds. It calculates uh, the time between each event. Um, and then it plays the sounds at whatever volume that you set up in the workspace. And then when all the instruments play, moves on to the next event. And when the full song is played, then it closes out the sound buffers and returns the memory to the system. One of the secrets I found besides having to use the embedded Windows Media Player was um, allowing that eight tick pre-roll before the loop, allowing all the sounds to load into the buffers. It was very important. Another uh, key point was to use ranges, allowing me to use offsets which makes the programming and indexing much, much easier. The uh, final routine I added in the module was to uh, format the first row where all the user parameters are. And it was very important that it got put in correctly. Otherwise, you could have a bug. So I did it for you. You're welcome. I wanted this code to be as transparent as possible and uh, allow you to examine it so you feel safe using this on your computer and you know that there's no viruses. Remember, this is all samples, so you can act, you don't have you can use your own noises, you can use your own sounds, you can use a human uh, beatbox, whatever you want. Um, you can even record this 
on say audacity and then put that recording in as a sample here i'm doing the play pause um, for the menu now next thing is we're going to go back up to excel and we're going to run this routine we're going to go to macros and we're going to run create um, the create function and it's going to set it all up for you as you can see most of the information is there right click on the upper left hand uh, little widget up there and you're and resize it so it all fits in nicely and you have nice little squares uh, that way you can uh, fill in as many events as possible uh, after this let's go back to the editor and click on sheet one and view and then code and now we start typing in the code I love it when my voice cracks. Uh, the first event we trap is the right click. Uh, that becomes your delete. Uh, notice I set up a range um, for the works uh, area and make sure that the click is within the work area. This is an improvement over the drum machine, which you could have clicked anywhere, but it only played that certain area. Next, we look to see if the first row has been changed. Either we either play or we reformat the work area, depending on your parameters. And now we uh, examine the work area and see if there's a click. And then we increment the volume from one to four, um, depending on uh, you know, how loud you want it. One is the softest, four is the loudest. Right click is a delete. And then if you left click and drag, you're selecting. Those are really the only instructions I have to give you. I'll show you a demonstration later. Okay, I'll return the cursor back to the beginning. And next is the actual formatting of the graphics. Um, just making the area, high, highlighting the work area so you know where to click and where not to click. And giving you like a ruler on top that shows you what the beats are and where each subdivision of the beat is. Each like 16th note for every quarter note. Um, the, this, uh, you know, you. You can modify this, you can add borders, you can, you can change the colors. Everything is uh, set out as, uh, um, set up as RGB. So you can, if you don't like these colors, make your own color. Uh, one of the best things I, su I would suggest is at the end, go up to your view menu and just turn off the grid line. It looks so much better without grid lines. Now, if you're wondering how far it goes, it goes all the way to column EI. That's that's the extent that you can do it to. Okay, so we're ready. We're going to change this to 32. And you can see how it formats at 32. But now we have to put in the names of the files of the audio. So on the, on the first row in the workspace, or all the way to the left of the workspace, I'm going to put in uh, CH h wave which is closed hi-hat let's adjust this a little uh ohh dot wave which is um what i created as an open hi-hat uh the, the bass drum which i just used the generate tone in uh, audacity um the snare again that was generate noise and then the crash symbol, which is a lot of noise, and I use the uh, the envelope tool. Uh, but you could just find samples like these anywhere. So this this is it. Now the most important thing is go to the save menu, file menu, go to save as, um, put 
the file in the same location as your sounds. I'm going to call this sample machine. But most importantly, I'm going to change the type to a macro enabled workbook. Otherwise, it will not run the macros. Okay, let me just show you is I put it in with the sound files that I've been using. Some of these sound files I'm not going to use in the demo, but uh, or maybe I will. I don't know. But they were all created using Audacity. Maybe somebody knows of a tutorial for creating sounds with Audacity that they could post. Okay. Now, how to use it. If we change the number of ticks to 16, we get four beats with four subdivisions. If we change it to 128, we get 32 beats with four subdivisions per beat. Or in other words, four sixteenth notes per beat. Uh, let's take it back to 32, and let's change this to a triplet. Three subdivisions per beat. If you want to go jazz, you can go like six. Um, but let's stick with uh, four four time. Uh, you can change the number of samples. I added one. I went to six samples. Um, I got to put in my ARP sample, which uh, it, 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 it's, it's kind of cool sounding. I put my tick in the first column of the workspace. Change from pause to play. And there's the sample. Oh, I add a few more triggers. And uh, let's add some hi-hats. Let's fill this out. I mean, might as well. Notice as you click one time, you get uh, one, you get two times, you get two, you get three times, you get four. <laughs> three times, you get three, four times, you get four. If you right-click, it erases. So let's do a simple eight beat here. Um, now, I'm not, uh, it, you can select and you can copy. Now, you can select the area you want to paste to. Go to the first cell, hit paste, and it repeats it for you. So you can loop to your heart's content. You can, you can do repetitions and sections. Um, that's some bass drums. Oh, yeah. Again, no, I'm not going to be a dummy. I'm, I'm going to select my section. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it where I want to paste. Select the first cell. Otherwise, it doesn't work well. Um, and play. There's that eight count pre delay. It's the low the sounds. Cool. There. We'll let the last uh, sand, the last trigger linger. Simple enough. Uh, let's go with a, um, a triplet beat. I'll do a shuffle. So each beat gets, uh, like a, you know, dotted half in there. So you, you, you get the triplet beat. Let's reduce this down to just two beats and, you know, we'll expand on later. It's going to be cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to take off the ARP because that was in four, four time, and this is not four, four time. So let's just do the hi-hat, uh, simple bass drum. I'll use the same pattern with the hey. Yeah, but it'll sound differently. Watch. Very Pink Floyd. Okay, let's, let's kick up the volume in the bass drum. I know it sounds more like a note than a bass drum, but I should have distorted that a little. Okay, let's do a trick. Let's select it all. Let's copy it. It's a spreadsheet, so let's go to the next tab and paste it. 
Now we can reformat the whole thing for uh, 24, a multiple of three, and then select, right click on the first cell, paste, bingo. Let's add a, let's add a fill. There we go. Uh, just that'll work. If you edit on the fly, it may cause a little glitch when you edit. That's normal. I'm going to right click and delete and get more of a bluesy feel. I know it's not really a crash symbol, but more like a laser gun. Yeah, I think I ruined it at the end with the laser gun. Okay, that's about it. See what you can come up with. Have fun.